What's up guys? Today we're talking about what equipment I use when shooting real estate. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As I mentioned today, I am going to tell you all the stuff that I use to shoot real estate videos. As you guys know, I shoot a lot of real estate for a living. I've done a couple of videos on how I shoot, but today I just wanted to go over basically my necessities. This is not always everything I use, but it is pretty much everything I use every time I go to shoot a listing. So for those of you trying to get into real estate and you wanna know what the best equipment is or what equipment I use and what is the most accessible, then this is the video for you. Obviously there's going to be better lenses or better cameras or better lighting, but this gets the job done and gets the job done well. Okay, first things first is the camera. I have the A7R3 right here. Uh, this is kind of new to me, but it's pretty much what I've been using. I have the A7S II, which you can see from the top angle is filming me, and obviously I can't put that in shot because I'm using it right now. But these are great cameras. The S-Log is perfect for real estate and you're able to get some amazing images even in low light. So first things first is a camera. Second and probably the second most important tool for real estate is my gimbal. Uh, there's sometimes I'll use a tripod if I'm filming the agent talking or I wanna get a static shot which is becoming more and more rare but i am using a gimbal on everything this right here is the zion weeble uh as you've seen in my other videos i've used the dji ronin m since the beginning of the dji ronin m and i still have it right off shot hanging over on the wall and still use it to this day despite upgrading to this because there's just some things that the ronin can do that this can't Mainly, as you've seen in other videos, being able to attach a monitor on top, a light on top, a microphone on top. It's just perfect for when you need to kind of have a full lighting set up on you at one time. This is perfect for closets and bathrooms that don't have a lot of lighting and you just need to put a light on top to get the area um, as bright as you possibly can. But definitely want to invest in a gimbal. I think this guy is 400 bucks. When I bought the Ronin M, it was $1,500. I'm pretty sure they're not that much anymore if they still make it. And DJI has their equivalents to this as well. I just happen to like this one better than the DJI for once and probably forever. I chose something else besides DJI. This is the Ronin M. It's a beast. You can see right here, I've got this uh, whatever that I can put a monitor on like that to watch the camera instead of like looking down like this as uh, I've been known to do from time to time. I've also got another one of these guys that I put right here that allows me to put that light on top like that. You've seen that before if you've watched the other video, but the Ronin M is great and you could probably get it for super cheap because it's old, but this thing still works. Speaking of having a light on the top, I have this Viltrox rectangle light, which is perfect for real estate, especially when you have it attached to a gimbal because it's not short and small. Uh, like a lot of the lights, they're like about this big. This one is long so that it lights up the whole room and you don't just see a spot of light on an area. It's casting a wide, whatever I'm trying to say. Uh, there's so many times where you buy the little on-camera light like I've got right above me here uh, that's about this big and you can just see like a spot of light, almost like a flashlight on the wall or whatever furniture is in the shot. And with this, it eliminates that because it expands the light out. Um, also, I did a video on why this is covered, why I created this softbox. Uh, but it's perfect because it just gives you a nice softer light. I have bought this for 50 bucks, I don't know, three or four years ago. It still works. It still works perfectly. I use this all the time. Uh, and right now I'm using it to put a little light behind me. Next, let's talk lenses, which is gonna be a little hard. 
because I am currently using the lens that I use the most to film me right now, which is the Samyang 18 millimeter 2.8. It's probably my favorite real estate lens. I'm sure there's much better wide angle lens and glass out there that you can buy for hundreds and thousands of dollars, but for a good $300, $400 lens, uh, it's perfect and gets the job done, especially since I'm shooting on full frame cameras. I don't want to, I don't really need to go to 15 or 14 millimeter. Uh, 18 does the job just fine, but you can also use this. I never know how to say this. Leoa, Leoa, Glaoa. This lens is great too. It's only an F4 uh, stop, but it works pretty well. It's 15 millimeters. Um, usually when you're shooting real estate, you want to stay in that 5.6 to, I don't know, 8 F stop. Uh, so you're getting as much in focus as possible. You don't really want that bokeh, but sometimes uh, you do when you're filming an agent talking about the, the uh, listing. It just gives it a more cinematic look. This also does a really good job as a macro lens. I said that weird macro lens. Um, getting really nice detailed up close sh shots to add to your video. Uh, but yes, I will have links to all the lenses I use in the description and we'll probably put separate video up over me saying all this of the lenses when I'm not filming myself with them. I'm using this 28 millimeter above me that's getting this shot right here. Focus, focus. Grab it. Perfect. That is a Samyang 24 millimeter 2.8, which is still pretty wide, but not as wide and gets a nice shot, especially when you're filming the real estate agent. While we're talking lenses, let's also talk ND filters, more specifically variable ND filters. These are essential to shooting outside real estate. You still want to get the clouds in shot. You still want to get that blue sky in shot. These make your shot better. Undeniably better, undeniably better from amateur to professional just with this right here. It also allows you to open up your f-stop and get a nice bokeh. Again, if you're filming up close on something or you want that bokeh look for a shot or you're filming an agent, you get the picture. I keep saying it, but these work miracles outside. This is one of the uh, small on-camera lights that I've used in the past. It's great. It's very bright, but it just causes a spot. See? You don't really want that showing up when you're shooting. Whereas this casts a nice, wide, soft light on your room. All right, let's talk drones. If you're shooting real estate, you need a drone. They're more and more affordable by the day. You can get DJI's cheapest drone, which I think is the Spark, which is like, I don't know, 300 bucks, maybe a little bit more, maybe even a little bit less. Uh, I started out using the DJI Phantom drones, the big white guys. I uh, started out when you had to get the extra option uh, before they started using their own camera and you attached the GoPro to it and it was a nightmare. Uh, and then they got their own camera and that was great. And then they switched to these Mavics, which this was my first one, the Mavic Pro. Um, I say first one, I've bought 12 drones. This is 11 and this is 12. The new Mavic Pro 2 with the nice Hasselblad. Hasselblad, Hasselblad? I don't know how to say this stuff. I just use it. The Previous 10 are all dead. I crashed them. Every single one of them. Dead. Dead. It's going to happen. Buy the cheap one at first. Learn how to fly it. Wreck it. Crash it. Buy another cheap one. Fly it better. Crash it. Buy another cheap one. Fly it even better. Crash it. Buy one of these guys. 
feel like you're awesome and you know what you're doing, crash it. It's going to happen. You got to see it as a tool. If you break your hammer, you don't cry about it. It's a more expensive hammer, but it is a hammer. Also watch your restrictions, watch your guidelines, get your license, all the stuff you need to do to fly a drone. Make sure you're doing it. All right, let's talk audio. As I've said about a thousand times in this video, I like to shoot the agent on camera talking about the listing. It makes it more cinematic. It makes it more entertaining. You get more information. It makes it more personable. More people watch it. It sells the house. I've been doing this for 10, 11 years. I've learned that putting the agent on camera always sells the house. So when you do that, you have to mic them. Now you can use a shotgun mic. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Depends on if you're outside, inside, how echoey the house is, everything. Get you a nice shotgun mic. I'm using one right now. It's the uh, little road guy, the little $50 road shotgun mic. It's great. Did a whole video on it. It's great. You can get the other road mics. I have those too. I have the big boom mics, uh, but you, you need a mic. Now, Rode made these micro or Rode Go. I will put right here what it's actually called. I think it's Rode Go though. What makes these great is that this part will clamp right onto here and plug into your outlet. And you turn it on. Wireless Go, there it is, Rode Wireless Go. Brought to you by, not a sponsor. And then you turn this guy on. And now they're synced, as you can see. As you can see, it's got a mic right there. It's also got a plug-in where you can plug in a mic like I've got wrapped around this guy. But you just can put this, I mean, you'd probably wanna be more discreet about it, but now I've got it on there and I am recording as soon as I turn the camera on and press record. This set is about 200, 200 bucks. This guy is a hundred bucks, it's a Zoom audio recorder, and I just plug in this lapel mic and turn it on, hit record, and then have them shove it in their pocket, run it up their shirt, and record audio separately, which is great too. You just sync it and post. You just want good audio. Good audio is better than good video. I wish that it wasn't the case because I like good video, but bad audio can ruin the best video. Invest in mics. External monitor like this guy that I've just brought down here that I've got attached to this camera, as you can see, uh, this is a small HD. It was about 600 bucks. I think they're 400 bucks now. Um, there's other options like this guy that's a brick. It's a lily put. It weighs about 782 tons um, and really weighs you down, but it's a cheap option. Um, but the small HD, super light, super great. Love it. It's got lets you know how much light you got in shot. And then that lets you know if you're in focus and a million other things. That would've been so cool if I would've just done it right away, but I didn't. <sighs> I didn't. And that's pretty much everything I use when I go out on a shoot. I'm sure there's other things, especially if I'm doing an interview with a real estate agent, but that doesn't count. That's a whole, that's, a whole different side of production. I'm talking about when you go out and you do a listing, you film a listing for an agent, what are the essentials you need? Not all of them are essentials, but they do make the job easier. Are there other things that are probably used by guys doing it? Yes, like a Segway or a hoverboard, but these are what I use day in and day out and get awesome video that clients love and keep hiring me for. Am I the best? Probably not. Am I the worst? Depends on who you ask. So if this video was helpful, please let me know in the comments. If you use something different, you have a different way of doing it, you wanna let me know how bad I suck, also leave a comment. And if you want me to keep putting out videos like this, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and I will appreciate it.
I'll write you back. I'll send a letter to your sister in Idaho. You tell me. Also check out the other videos if you haven't on how I shoot real estate where I go in to a home and show you how to shoot it and the other lighting techniques as I mentioned in this. Uh, thanks again.